Hello everyone, welcome to Enviro Pioneers. In this video, we will learn the concept of metrology. Metrology is very important in environmental science as it links the atmospheric processes with the ecosystems, water, land and human activities. It has its application in predicting the air pollution dispersion, climate change monitoring, water resources management, disaster management, agricultural practices and its management in the energy sector, mainly in the renewable energy production. It is also useful in the study of the ocean and atmospheric interaction. And it is also important in studies related to the human health because human health is affected by the heat stress, cold waves or the humidity and also the weather condition it influences the spread of the vector borne diseases like the malaria, dengue, cholera etc. So this metrology it is defined as the study of the atmosphere, atmospheric phenomena and their effect on the weather. Like atmospheric physics, atmospheric chemistry, aeronomy and climatology, meteorology is also a branch of the atmospheric sciences. It mainly focuses on the lowest layer of the Earth's atmosphere that is the troposphere and this is the layer where most of the weather events take place. And this study has applications in energy production, transport, agriculture, construction, weather forecasting, military, aviation and disaster management. Weather, that is the condition of air at the earth's surface, it occurs at different scales of space and time. And these scales represent the size and duration of weather events. Thus, the study of the atmosphere, it can be done at different scale. In terms of space, it can be from few centimeters to thousands of kilometers. And in terms of time, it can be for a day or for a week or for entire year. Thus, the metrology is classified into microscale metrology, mesoscale metrology, synoptic scale metrology, and global scale metrology. We will see the difference among these one by one. We will start with the microscale metrology. So, it mainly focuses on the phenomena that range in size from a few centimeters to few kilometers and that have the short life spans less than 24 hours. And these phenomena, they affect very small geographic areas and they impact the temperature and terrain of those regions. And this microscale meteorology is also associated with the uh, atmospheric chemistry because it helps to understand how the gases and the particles will behave locally. So example of the microscale meteorology, it include the transfer of the heat between the soil and the vegetation, the movement of the air pollutants and the air quality. Next is mesoscale meteorology. So this is the study of those phenomena which range from a few kilometers to nearly 1000 kilometers and can last from less than a day to several weeks. So this mesoscale phenomena, these are mainly of two types, mesoscale convective complexes and mesoscale convective system. So these both are caused by the convection. Convection is a process of circulation. Due to difference in the absorption and the reflection characteristics of different features, some surfaces become more heated in comparison to the other. So the air which is in immediate contact with the heated earth surface, that will become warm and it will rise above in the atmosphere and this place will be replaced by the cold air from the surrounding. So here it is mentioned that warmer less dense fluid it rises and the colder denser fluid it sinks. So this convection it results in the transfer of the energy, heat and moisture and it is the basic building blocks of the weather. In both mesoscale convective complexes and mesoscale convective system a large area of air and moisture is warmed during the middle of the day when the sun angle is at its highest. As this warm air mass rises into the colder atmosphere, it condenses into the cloud, turning the water vapor into the precipitation. During the day, because of the solar radiation, water vapor is formed in the atmosphere because of the evapotranspiration process. And this water vapor along with the warm air, it rises above in the atmosphere through the convection process. And as it moves above, it meets the colder temperature in the surrounding. 
and when this parcel of air and moisture reaches to sufficient cold temperature the condensation process occur means formation of the ice crystal and water droplet and then we have the formation of the cloud so here we have the difference between the mesoscale convective system and mesoscale convective complex so the mesoscale convective system it is a general term for the organized thunderstorm spanning hundred of kilometers and lasting for several hours while the mesoscale convective complex it is a complex of individual thunderstorms which covers a larger area about 100000 square kilometer and this type of com complex it is mainly observed in the infrared satellite imagery these mesoscale convective complex these are generally formed uh, in the late afternoon or during the night and they are long lived and commonly contain heavy rainfall they are associated with the wind, hail and the lightning. Next is synoptic scale meteorology. The word synoptic, it means view together or view at a common point. So this synoptic scale meteorology, it is concerned with viewing the weather at a common point in time. So this phenomena, it cover an area of several hundreds to thousand of kilometers and can persist for up to 28 days and they are made up of high and the low pressure system so here we have the difference between low pressure system and the high pressure system low pressure system it occurs where the atmospheric pressure at the surface of earth is less than the surrounding environment while the high pressure system it occur where the atmospheric pressure at the surface of earth is greater than the surrounding environment so the low pressure region is the area where the moist warm air it rises and cools down and the formation of the cloud and precipitation occurs in this region while the high pressure regions are those areas where the dry and the cold air it declines and as it moves near to the earth surface it warms up and on the earth this wind it blows in the clockwise direction from the center if we see in this image we have the low pressure regions at the equatorial belt and then at 60 degree north and 60 degree south so here it is mentioned low pressure and rising air but at 30 degree north and 30 degree south while at the 90 degree north and 90 degree south we have the region of high pressure where air descends from the atmosphere towards the ground so this reason of low pressure and reason of high pressure, this is responsible for generation of wind and that is covered in global scale meteorology. So the global scale phenomena are the weather patterns which are related to the transport of the heat, wind and moisture from the tropics to the poles. And an important pattern is the global atmospheric circulation that is the large scale movement of the air that helps to distribute the thermal energy across the surface of the earth so this global atmospheric circulation it is the constant movement of winds across the globe winds develop as the air masses move from the region of high pressure to region of low pressure as we can see we have the air movement from 30 degree north to the equatorial belt as well as towards the 60 degree north similarly we can see in this part also uh, from the 30 degree south the air movement is towards the equatorial belt as well as towards the 60 degree south so this global atmospheric circulation it is largely driven by the headlesses that is the tropical and equatorial convection patterns here in this image the red lines or red arrows they are representing the warm air and the blue lines are representing the cold air and this loop it shows that at the equator this warm air rises into the atmosphere here we have the cloud formation and in the atmosphere the dry and the cool air it moves towards the 30 degree north and 30 degree south and it descends towards the ground at these latitudes so this convection it drives the warm air high in the atmosphere while the cool dense air it pushes lower in the constant loop so in the global scale meteorology the meteorologists study the long-term climate patterns that disturb the global atmospheric circulation 
For example, El Nino that occurs roughly every five years, it disrupts the global atmospheric circulation and affects the local weather and economies from the Australia to Peru. So understanding the meteorological processes of the El Nino, it helps the farmers, fishers and the coastal residents to prepare for the climate pattern. So this was the brief description of the metrology and the scale of metrology. We are not going in detail in each of the concept because that we will cover in the upcoming videos. And here we have the comparison table for all the scales of the metrology. So we can see the micro scale metrology. This is at the small or the local scale and the distance scale is centimeter to few kilometers and time scale is less than a day. Likewise, the meso scale metrology, it is medium or regional kilometers to thousand kilometers and days to weeks. Likewise, the synoptic uh, metrology, it is for the large or the national and continental scales. It also ranges from 100 to 1000 kilometers, but the difference from the mesoscale metrology is time scale. Mesoscale, it is only for the days to weeks, while the synoptic metrology, it is up to a month. And then we have the global meteorology that is at the largest or the global level and the distance scale we can see here it is mentioned world and the time scale it is months and years. For air pollution monitoring, understanding of the meteorological parameters is important because they govern the dispersion, transport and the deposition of the air pollutants. In the UGC net syllabus, we have these parameters to cover temperature, pressure, precipitation, humidity, mixing ratio, saturation, mixing ratio, radiation and the wind velocity. So we will cover each of the topic in detail in the upcoming videos. These are the references for this video and we will meet soon in the next video related to the first parameter temperature. Thank you and best wishes.